fronts. And now we're getting into things you see on the evening news when they give the weather forecast. So uh, fronts. First, I want to point out a reference table has some information on fronts right here. It has the symbols and the names right there, page 13. And we're going to zoom in. This is what they look like. Oftentimes, the question is as simple as, uh, what's the name of this front that's about to enter New York State? What kind of front is that? Uh, and that's a warm front. Just look up the symbol, write down warm front. Um, I do want to point out that these kind of act like arrows. So this means it's moving this way. And this means that this is moving that way. So what kind of front is this? You look it up here. That's a cold front. Those are pretty straightforward questions, as long as you know to look here. So that's kind of cool. Uh, there's also stationary and occluded fronts. So what is a front? What does it look like? Um, and basically, a cold front is the front of cold air moving into warmer air. The warm front is the front of warm air moving into cooler air. Let's see. So this, if this is supposed to be the ground surface here, OK? So this is the ground, and then this is the air. What you have here, you have uh, both these warm air and cool air are both moving this way. In this case, the cool air is moving a little bit faster. And what happens, it kind of plows in to the warm air, and then it forces the warm air up. And anytime you have air rising, it cools. It cools to its dew point, and you get condensation, clouds, and rain. And the nature of a cold front is that it's kind of steep in the front, so the air gets pushed up kind of straight, so the, so the clouds are kind of tall, and you get heavy rain, like thunderstorms. Now, this is not that wide, so if you're standing here, it will go past you kind of quickly. So the weather you get at a cold front is short, heavy rain. Think of thunderstorms, and that could be really hard rain for 20, 30 minutes, and then, and then it passes. That's the common weather at a cold front. Uh, a warm front kind of looks like this. Now, the arrows in this case just happen to be moving this way. It could be moving anyway. Again, that's the surface of Earth. And here you have the air is moving this way, both, both air masses. In this case, the warm air is moving a little bit faster. And then it rides up over it. This is different in that this is a much more gradual slope. So the air will, will, won't go up like kind of straight up. So it's more over a wider area. And again, air rising hits the dew point, condensation, clouds. And so this area here is much wider. So if you're standing here, this takes a much longer for you to pass, to pass over you. But the rain isn't as intense because the clouds aren't as tall. So a uh, warm front weather you typically get are hours of moderate rain, often kind of called light rain or kind of heavy drizzle, and it may last for four, five, six hours. Uh, that's the common weather at a warm front. Okay, so, and I put them both here, and here's a, a, a common uh, question, something you need to know. Why does the warm air rise? I'll give you the wrong answer. The wrong air is, answer is because the cold air is pushing it up. That's not really it, okay? That's a little too simplistic. But the warm air goes up in both cases because the cool air is more dense and the warm air is more dense. So the denser air stays towards the, stays toward, towards the ground with the, with the less dense air going over it. You probably know in earth science by now, uh, density is such a key part to earth science and really all science. But uh, so that is the key to this density. Cool air is more dense than the warm air, therefore it stays towards the ground. And I like this diagram here because it kind of looks a little more like a photo, but it, although it's not, it has warm air here, cool air here, and cool air here. So the warm air is going over the cool air. So this is a warm front, and you can see the more wider area of clouds. And then this is a cold front, and you can see the clouds are really kind of uh, how, how uh, intense the rain is here. And the clouds are really tall, so you get that burst of thunderstorms, but it's not that wide, so it will pass quickly. Okay, so now we're kind of seeing this on a map. We have a low pressure. These fronts always come out of low pressures, okay? And uh, this is a warm front. This is a cold front. Now, we're seeing here where you tend to get clouds at fronts like this, okay? So in a warm front, you get a wider area of clouds out in, out in front of it. Low pressure usually has clouds around a low pressure. And a cold front has a narrower area of clouds that's kind of right on it. This isn't a great diagram because this should be a little bit um, like narrower. Oh, I like this one better. Okay, this probably shows it uh, a better, um, more clearly that out in front of the warm front, you have all these area of clouds. So again, you have a long period of rain. And then you the clouds at a cold front, narrower, but much more intense. So um, that shows it pretty well. We went back to a very similar diagram here. 
And I think one of the things that is very hard to understand, and it's hard to teach and explain, is there's a lot of movement here. So as we've learned, low pressure, you have air, the air is spiraling into a low, right, counterclockwise. That, that's what these arrows represent. And that's why this is moving this way, because of the counterclockwise motion here and here. Um, okay, so you have that motion. And I'm going to put the air masses in here. Continental polar. This is our polar cool air. Tropical air. Okay, so this is our warm air. And then this is polar air, cool air here. So this is a warm front, the front of warm air as it comes into cool. This is the cold front, the front of cool air going into warm. And so you have this sort of motion here as a spiraling. And then how is this whole thing going to move over the next few hours or days? It's going to move in this direction. Okay, so this whole thing while spiraling is also moving this way. That is the general direction that weather moves uh, in the U.S. Sort of like across the country this way and then like kind of to the northeast. Now, so for instance here, you have a low pressure here and you want to know what's going to happen over the next few days uh, where this is going. And it's going in this general direction. So, you know, this is our meteorologist over here in New York State where we live. This could be coming toward us in a few days, so that uh, affects our weather forecast. Now, hopefully you remember that. I think that's something you should remember, but just in case you forget, there's a lot to know. It's good when uh, some information is in the reference table. Now, you can use the reference table for this because we are right here, the U.S. is right here, and this is uh, the wind patterns, the general wind patterns come from the southwest and pushes weather that way. Now, I don't know if you know that we're here. Uh, do I expect you to know? I don't know that, but you can look it up. But just, just to let you know, this is a reference table, page five. This is a global map. No, it's there. I zoomed in on it a lot so we could see it. This is 30 degrees north and 60 degrees north. I just showed you on this, right? That's right here. So that gives you a sense of where the U.S. is. And then you could apply it to this chart on page 14. That is why knowing the reference tables, knowing your tools that you have is very important. There's a lot in there as long as you're very familiar with them. So that could help. Okay, so now we're doing with low pressure and high pressure. Um, I labeled them here and the type of weather you get at these in general. Low pressure, you get lousy weather. By lousy weather, I mean cloudy, rainy. Not so much temperature-wise because you have low pressures in in, uh, in the winter, in the summer, but it really means cloudy. High pressure means happy weather, which means not cloudy, not rainy, or if there are clouds, there's sort of those puffy fair weather clouds that let, that let, let a lot of uh, sunlight through. So uh, that is key. So if a low pressure is coming your way, that often means uh, bad weather. And the reason is because the air goes into a low, and as it goes in, when it goes into a low, it then goes up. Anytime you have a rise in air, it expands, it cools until it reaches its dew point and then clouds form. At a high pressure, the reverse happens. Actually, air's going down, so it's actually compressing, getting warmer, getting further from its dew point. So that's how that works. I put this in there to also show uh, how some of the movement of the weather goes across the country. This is the jet stream. The jet stream are these upper level winds. They're up to 300 miles an hour or more. Um, and they really help push the highs and the lows and the air masses around. And this is the common sort of path of it. Now it varies, it changes. You see this on the evening news as well. Uh, they're always watching the jet stream as it changes, but it always does go for the, in the US from west to east. So um, sometimes this comes up, no, notice the jet stream. It is on this map as well. They're kind of here, but that's just too hard to figure out. But so you just kind of really have to recognize the jet stream kind of works like that.